I, I can see it's here that there's things that you didn't include. I just gave them to you right now. So go crunch your numbers. But those factors of looking for about 40 pips maximum is based on several things and this is where you should be writing things down folks because if you're just driving down the road chilling in your bubble gum and, and corn chips and shit that ain't going to be good you're gonna have to come back and listen to this and write down some notes generally from the open at midnight to the high of the day it's usually within 30 pips that it makes the high of the day sometimes in some weird instances it'll go as much as 40 pips why 40 because sometimes you'll cross and breach a big figure number, for instance, a zero zero level. Okay. And if that's the case, the algorithm can many times spool or spread beyond a particular level, run past it, in other words, as much as 40 points or 40 pips. So that's why I use 40 pips as a general rule. And if it goes beyond 40 pips, then it's probably not going to be a sell off. It's probably going to keep going higher. Or it means I need it sit on my hands and do shit nothing nothing just go back to bed and then i'll trade the new york session okay so i just tossed it in there no extra charge but using our example for pound dollar in the new york session if we are expecting something bullish our weekly analysis indicates that we're in a buy model there's a high impact or medium impact news driver coming out at 8 30 or so in the new york session all new york local time Everything is always New York local time. Stop trying to take your shit in your chart and line up to your local time because it makes sense to you. Everything in these markets are always going to be on Eastern time. I don't give a fuck who tells you different. I don't care how long they said they've been trading. I don't give a fuck. Okay. That's all bullshit. Everything, all, all these algorithm is doing is running on New York time. Midnight in New York, that's the beginning of your fucking day. It's not Wellington. It's not, it's not Asia. Okay. It's New York midnight. That's the, that's the opening. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Anybody tells you different. That's the way it is. And you bring them. If you're here listening, you bring your shit and I will run right with you and I will run fucking circles around you and show you exactly what these fucking markets do, but you're going to fucking be schooled. So don't talk your shit in your little private little circles. Okay. Your little fucking webinars talking all your bullshit. You ain't getting the balls to come here directly. You do it right here and I will run circles around your motherfucking Mickey Mouse ass clown UK boy <laughs> so once you have that you're waiting for price to either drop down no more than 40 pips down to a low but if it runs down below a low that's lower than 40 pips you don't do anything you leave it alone you wait just let that go but if there's a low that say it's at 40 pips lower than the market price before that news driver comes out at 8.30. You look inside that low to where the market price is now. There should be a price leg that has moved up. Is there a fair value gap in that? If there is, then then you're anticipating now that the market drops down into that fair value gap and not below the low. Now, here's the here is that point of contention that every student of mine has even private mentorship students, they want the silver bullet answer that says, okay, here we are. We're at the brass tacks. This is where the rubber meets the road. ICT, lay it on me, baby. This is it. <laughs> Hear that? That's excitement in your voice. You're talking to yourself and I'm not in the room with you. <laughs> How do I know, ICT, that I can buy that fair value gap and it won't go below the low? Are you ready for this one? Ready? You got your pen and your paper? Write down this. I don't fucking know. You don't know. That's why you put a stop loss there. <gasps> Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that's it. But what happens if it goes down there and I get stopped out? What you do is you wait for it to create a short-term high. And then if it goes back below that short-term high, that's a shift in market structure. Wait for another fair value. Yeah. Then you buy that one with half the risk that you lost on the first trade. If you lose on that one, you're done for the day. Done. Done. How's that fucking complicated? It's liberating. You don't have to know. But if it does happen to you adversely, you know what you're going to do. And if it happens again as an adverse effect and you lose, you're done. You're fucking turning the charts off. You're done. That's your morning routine. You're done. You did your two trades. You've lost on both of them. You're done. Or the second one wins and you recuperate some of the drawdown, if not all of it, and maybe go into profit. 
that's the part that's going to separate all of you from the people that stick with this because if you can't accept the fact that you're probably going to lose and it won't change anything it just takes a little bit away from you just like it takes away from your fucking gas tank when you drive to your fucking slave job okay it costs you money to go to work but you don't ever look at it like that it costs you toll money to get to work but you don't look at it like that that's a fucking loss okay your stop loss is getting hit every fucking day as soon as you start that car up and you're driving down the fucking road your stops are getting hit it's costing you fucking money you gotta replace a fucking tire you gotta replace your tires you gotta change your fucking oil guess what that's drawdown baby it's all about perception you're running around with blinders on you can't do this and not lose money you're gonna lose money but you have to manage effectively how you lose it and come back from it so you're going to do one of those two things you're going to look for a swing low now if it's less than preferably 30 pips that swing low on the hypothetical example of pound dollar i would even if it had a fair value gap i would give it the likelihood or the opportunity to trade below that low especially if it's a high impact news driver i would look for it to potentially run that low but if if we trade down to the fair value gap in that low if it's less than 30 pips i i sacrifice that entry that would have been at the fair value gap because i'm waiting to see if it wants to take the low out if it takes no interest in going below that low and it reacts at the fair value gap then what i'll do is, is i'll buy the next down close candle as an owner block that's it. Isn't that straight to the fucking point, folks? Okay? You young guys, get to the fucking point. You can't get any more to the fucking point than I'm doing right now. I'm literally giving you it the step by fucking step, and you're still going to fucking complain. <laughs> Whatever. So what you're doing is, is you're determining if you're bullish in a buy model. You're expanding higher on the weekly candle. You're waiting for opposing price direction at the time of the news driver being released okay so whatever you know like an employment number or uh, um, economic number that comes out you're expecting the algorithm to reprice lower and that's going to get all the retail traders wanting to go short that's exactly what you want that is the green light go you're looking for you want to see something opposed to what you think the weekly candle is going to do at that time of that report that's manipulation that's the trick. That's the broken wing trick that the robin does to protect its little fledgling that's trying to teach how to fly. You ever seen that a robin on the ground? And you, and you see it, it sees you before you see it. And it starts chirping real loud. And it starts putting its wing out to the side like it's broke. and Because it, it wants you to chase it. And once you get close to it, that fucking wing's perfect. It flies away and it's laughing at you. But you don't see the baby it's distracted you from. Well, the market does that same kind of thing. That's a Judas swing. It leads you down the primrose lane. It makes you think you're seeing something that's valid, but it's not. And it catches people that are off side because they're ignorant. They have no idea what the fuck they're doing. And they're chasing excitement. Just like a predator. They want to chase the thing that's running. Well, when the market runs, you know, think about what that's done. You have all these people that are neophytes. They're traders that have no idea what they're doing. And they're just anticipating doing something next but they don't know what it is to do because they're looking at these candles forming and they have no idea but when there's an excitement and it moves really really fast low real quick sudden what does that mean oh man i'm missing it fomo kicks in fear of missing out on the move it's already dropped 20 points man it could go 100 points today or 100 ticks today and i, I don't care if i missed the first 30. let me just get in there right now at down 32 ticks <laughs> So you shorten, or they're shorten rather, into that move when you're looking to go long. That's smart money. That's what institutional mindset is. Okay, You're looking for the opposing view of what you're trying to do. That's that market efficiency paradigm. Remember month one in the core content? That's what you're doing. Smart money is a small little circle of entity that uses the greater community against themselves but they have to have that smaller community to act as a counterparty so they use enticement they induce the excitement of seeing these big movements and it trips them up 
and they are rushing into the marketplace with liquidity. What are they doing? That big drop that occurs. Let me let me say this. This might not occur in price, and if it doesn't, you do nothing. But if the market does drop, and all things being equal that I've outlined here, these are the things that would do to get into a trade. But that rush for retail or street money traders, the people that don't know what they're doing, they're doing what? They're selling at the market. Sell, 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 sell. So what is actually occurring? They're drawing in and engineering sell side liquidity. Why would they do that? Because they want to buy it. They have to have sellers at a lower price. Oh shit, the tumblers are turning, aren't they? <laughs> Woo! You're good now, aren't you now? You're learning some shit. Never expected that on a Sunday. Some of you are listening to me in your headphones right now, and you're wondering if the person next to you is a church pew thinking, did he just hear ICT this holler and whistle? <laughs> They're probably listening too, don't worry about it. So you're looking for sell side liquidity when you're bullish in a buy model, in a Judas swing that's going lower, in a high impact or a medium impact news driver. Or you're looking for a BISI, a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, where it's like a fair value gap where the candle that we'd be focusing on would be a bullish candle. Okay. So fair value gaps are the classification. Okay. That's the imbalance. And to set this record straight, uh, it is not in, 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 any George Angel books. There's a fucking clown out there trying to say that this is taught in George Angel. In fact, I'll fucking prove it to you. I'll thumb through real quick and show you there is no fucking reference to a fair value gap in winning in the futures market by George Angel. Okay. I have the book. You can look at it too. It's on fucking line. It's not in there. $500,000. Find my shit anywhere before 1996 in print or in video anywhere. You won't fucking find it. Go fuck yourselves. So you're looking for one of two things. If you're bullish, you're looking for sell stocks to be rated or engaged. Or if you're looking for a fair value gap, preferably if you're trading Forex, it's preferably less than 40 pips below the market price. In other words, the market price being right before the news event comes out. Or preferably below 30 pips. Okay, so that factor further increases let's assume if you're bullish and say london we're ringing london too because this is what makes new york better in my opinion you have the added benefit of knowing what london has done let's now say that we had a previous late session low in pound dollar day before before new york midnight for today's hypothetical trading day and overnight in london we traded down below that and then we had a nice reaction higher and we, we drifted back down and say that drifting back down is inside the leg that was created from the London low to the market price prior to the news report coming out at 830 in our hypothetical example where we would potentially be bullish on pound dollar. These things are further amplified in terms of odds in your favor because now you have that likelihood of the London low of the day is in place. And now you're not going to see much of a retracement lower in that leg because they don't want to get close to that low. It's already locked in. So they're going to be reaching for a higher time frame buy side liquidity pull or where that weekly chart's reaching for. It may not reach for it and arrive at it that particular trading day. It may require another day later in the week because we're looking at a weekly expansion. The weekly candle is generated over what the course of the week that doesn't mean that it can't happen where the largest expansion occurred on that one single day whether it be monday or tuesday or whatever one particular day it could have been all the movement can be done with a report day and then could be quiet you know before or after that particular event so you have to have all that factored in watch it which is why it's important to only be focusing on medium or high impact news drivers because you won't you will be less likely to miss the moves if you do that now, it doesn't mean you can't trade on days without high impact or medium impact news drivers. It just means that all things being equal and whatever's in motion will tend to be in motion until we get to the report day. Or in layman's terms, if it's been bullish and a buy side liquidity pool hasn't been reached yet, 
with their, if there's an absence of a medium or a high impact news driver on that particular trading day, I'll still trade long. And that's fine. I just won't push my maximum leverage. I won't pyramid a lot in, the, in that particular type of day because it might not create a lot of movement. So why should I build my positions large? I want to do that. And once I've seen the manipulation, it's given me, it showed me its hand like a poker table. Okay. I've seen my player's hand. So now I'm going to play mine strong. I'm going to go all in. And I'm going to build and build and build because I'm on side. I'm on the right direction because of my weekly analysis. It's indicated to me that they, they enticed the street money to come in going short at a time when I'm look, looking to go long. And one of two factors I'm looking for, I'm looking for sell side to be taken. If it's too far away to reach for it reasonably, then I'm looking for a fair value gap. If it doesn't have a fair value gap, here's a third. Okay. Cause just like on roulette, it's not red and black. It's red, black, and green. And green can fuck the whole show up. Green is there is no fair value gap, and the low is too far away to consider. It's beyond thirty or forty pips below the market price. So what do we do then? You wait. You wait for the market to create another run higher, short term high. It trades back down, and once it breaks that short term high, now we have a shift in market structure. Follow the narrative. Do everything I just outlined before. Look for a fair value gap or a run below a low, and submit to it. You might have to do a secondary trade with less, less leverage if you get burned on a fair value gap entry. But that's my two trade rule on it. And if I lose on both, I'm done. I have to wait for the PM session or I just simply stop for the day. That's it. Is that complicated, folks? Now, for someone that's new, now I'm not, I'm not going to be unreasonable here. For someone that's new, the terms I'm tossing out here... And some of the logic I'm saying, if you've been around me for a while, you know, this this might seem like, wow, this is this is really complicated. Just give me a fucking moving average, pal. <laughs> give me a moving average and a stochastics, man, and call it a day. This is too much PhD shit. Piled high and deeper. No. This is algorithmic principles being articulated in a straightforward manner. Right to the fucking point. You asked for this shit. Now you have it. What are you gonna do with it? That's what I'm interested in. And then obviously you're just going to submit to the draw on liquidity based on that weekly chart. Now, there are smaller draws on liquidity in the intraday charts, and you see me referencing them all the time. Why do I do that? And why don't I do that with the weekly chart? Because that's the work you're supposed to be doing. How many trades have you seen me share? How many things have I articulated before I even put the trade on? I say, okay, here's the direction I'm looking for because I'm looking at a particular price level. I'll say, note this on your chart. So if it's above the market price when I'm tweeting that, is that bearish? Fuck no, it's not bearish. And there's people still out there thinking, well, why'd you go long? Aren't you bearish? What the fuck would I be looking to go short for if I'm pointing to something 30 fucking handles above the market price? How is that fucking bearish? That's an unrealized objective. It's below where market price is. That means I'm fucking bullish. I'm looking for a reason to go long. It might not be there yet, but I'm looking to get up there. Vice versa, if I, I say here, note this on your chart, and it's below the market price, that means what? I'm bearish. I'm going to be looking for something. Looking for what? Some of this shit I just outlined here. Not limited to, but that's predominantly what I'm trying to do. Looking for a way to on-ramp and get a ride to that, okay? Or build a bridge to it. And that's what I do in the morning. Now, it took more time for me to outline it, explain it, give you different, well, instances where you might have to contend with certain things and certain factors and weigh out whether or not you want to do something. But by far and large, it cuts right to the meat. Trims all the fat off, all the bullshit. It goes right to what are you trying to do? And folks, let me, let me explain this to you, okay? If you doubt what I just gave you is not fucking platinum, go back and look at every fucking move in the last six months. And you're going to see one of those two instances. And for the assholes to say, oh, but it, it didn't work here. Use the alternative things I've told you. And you'll get it. Period. If you lose on the day, you must consider using half of what you risked 
in your next trading day, whatever that trading day would be. If it's the next trading session, if it's the next trading day, if you used, if in other words, if say you were trading 10 contracts in the S&P and you lost, okay, on your first trade, then you drop down to five contracts on the second trade. If you lose on that, you're done for the day. You cannot take another fucking trade. I don't give a fuck about five trade fucking Larry down in fucking Texas, okay? You stop. You don't have the control factors that is required to stay solvent right now. You're learning. So don't be doing this. I need to do this because this guy does five fucking trades. He's got Trump coins. He's flipping fucking quarters. Fuck that shit. You have to limit your exposure. You have to do that now in the beginning because if you don't, you're going to develop bad habits or you're just going to blow your fucking account. And you're going to discourage yourself before you even give, your chances, give yourself a real chance to do this and succeed. But if you take two trades and they both lose, you took one at 10 lots, you lose. You take one at five lots, that's half of what you leveraged on your first trade and lost. The next trade, you're taking five lots. If you lose on that one, you're done for the day. If you win on that second trade, regardless of what the win is, you're done for the fucking day. You do not trade in the PM session. Done. But Michael, but shit! You don't fucking trade again. You won. Leave it there. There's other trading opportunities. Stop fucking thinking that one trade idea, that one particular trading session is the be all end all. That's your fucking career. You're trying to encapsulate your entire fucking lifetime career in that one trading day. The fuck is wrong with you? Stop thinking like that. That's what every neophyte retail losing fucking prick does. I'm telling you because I did that same shit when I was 20 years old. Stop. You have to expand your expectations beyond that right now moment. How is the decision you're about to make right now going to impact your career? Is it going to fucking end you? Are you going to invite the ending of your career in that one trading session, that one trading day? Because that's what you're really fucking doing when you break these rules. So when you break them, don't fucking cry to me. Don't you dare send me a fucking tweet saying I didn't listen because I don't want to see it. Because I've given you reasons now how to avoid it. I've given you the logic on how to avoid it. But if you've taken one trade at 10 and you lose, you take another trade at five contracts and you lose, you stop trading. Whenever you trade again, whether it may be the next trading day or next week, say it happens to be on a Friday. Okay. Uh, my best advice is if you had a winning week, don't trade on Fridays because you'll regret it. <laughs> if you lose, you're going to want to get back to what you had as an equity high for the week in such a short little period of time. And the market generally, generally tends to get real quiet towards the end of the, the Friday week close. And you'll think you see shit in the charts and they won't be there. And you'll lose more. And you'll go into the weekend hating it because either you gave back the weekly gain or a large portion of it and you could have been feeling good about it on the weekend saying you know what i didn't trade on friday i had a good week why push it why why the fuck do you need that because you're trying to increase your social media equity curve and that's a fucking loser's game don't do that it's about making fucking money and consistently keeping it fuck their opinion about you or me who gives a fuck do you think any of this shit that these people fucking say about money is changing anything? It hasn't. So don't worry about it. Don't factor any of those fucking things in. Keep your results. That's the focus. And follow the fucking rules. But whatever that next trading day is, whether it be the next trading day or the next week, or like on a Monday, if it's been Friday, you did this two day or two losing trades in one single day. What would you trade with if you lost 10? and five well you can't do two and a half so just do two contracts and you have to trade that two contracts until you make 50 percent of what you lost when you lost on the five contract losing trade once you get back to 50 percent of that now this is the highest form of what i do you shouldn't in the beginning you shouldn't do this you should recoup the full loss that you took at the five contract loss and then at that point, then you can go back to trading five contracts. And when can you go back to 10? When you make what that losing trade was when you lost on 10 contracts. You have to be organized. You have to be diligent about keeping records of what you did, how you lost the money, and how do you build it back systematically, soberly. You're not trying to get out there and just roll the fucking dice. It's not fucking Las Vegas, folks. You got to go in here with a principal mindset, knowing that you can lose your fucking ass. 
don't take stupid risks don't guess if it's not obviously in the chart and if the conditions aren't ripe where the you know the, the production of a result that is favorable isn't likely and more in your favor than not you don't fucking trade you don't do that you simply observe and if you don't know when that is you haven't been studying and back testing and tape reading long enough because you're going to know when it's obvious for you to get in right now you're all just itching to get that feeling of winning the fucking lottery like it's a scratch off that's dumb that's a loser's mindset you don't do that folks you don't do traders that make money consistently they don't fucking guess they don't guess we know exactly what we're fucking looking for we're waiting for it if it doesn't materialize we sit still and we don't give a fuck about Tom, Dick, and fucking Harry on social media and what they're claiming they did. Does that make sense? Has anything I've outlined here seemed overly complicated, except for the folks that don't know my terminology? Or if you're too green and have, have never really looked at the chart and understood the, the references of the weekly chart versus an intraday chart, I understand then it would go over your head. But if you spend time with the content that I've put on my YouTube channel, you come back to this video or come back to this discussion or this recording. And everything I just outlined for you is a fucking pathway to the fucking bank. It's consistent, folks. What I just outlined here today, you'll get this at least two times a week. And you only need one. You only need one to have a career. One winning trading day. And if you stopped, that's a career. See, some of you see what I do against these people that talk shit about me. I'll put example out just every day. Boom, 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 boom. And you think that's what ICT wants me to do. No, it's not what I want you to do. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is find your unique model that fits you, that fits your risk appetite, how you are comfortable with trading, your frequency of trading. And then live there. Bloom where you're planted. See, there's a lot of things I'm never going to fucking teach you folks, okay? I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to do it because what I've taught already has been abused. And there was other things that I was never going to teach you anyway because I'm not permitted to teach it to you. But you don't need to know those things, but I will absolutely showcase that shit in 2023. You got no idea what I'm about to fucking show. But you don't need to try to keep up with that. Just because you're my student... You don't need to do that. My interest, my whole fucking reason for doing this is I want to see you all succeed and see beyond your paychecks. I want you to have that feeling of knowing that you have something extra. Because that little bit of a help each month goes a long fucking way. When I was a young man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a rant here and then I'll open up for five questions and please don't give me. Yeah, I got three questions real quick. No, you got one question and now I'm moving on. When I was a young man and I moved out of my aunt and uncle's house, I was paying room and board with them 50 bucks a week. And they uh, more or less were like, hey, <laughs> we were trying to give you a helping hand, not let you sit here and get rich. And you know, I was like, okay, well, that wasn't ex the result of our conversation and where I was thinking we were going to go with this, but I felt uncomfortable. So obviously I had to move out and I, I didn't know a lot about life in general. I, I had a very sheltered childhood. Um, I didn't, I didn't know much about many things at all, really. And when I was living by myself, the rent wasn't all that expensive. I think it was like 400 and 16 bucks a month for a two bedroom apartment and buying furniture and you know buying things for the house and stuff it was it was awkward for me cuz i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know how to pick shit you know and i was single at the time and i was afraid if i bought the wrong furniture and if i started dating someone they wouldn't like the furniture and then it was cuz i'm obsessively compulsive it was very very difficult for me and all these little decisions, these little things that I had to contend with would be a factor in my trading. Like these things, like I would be thinking, am I buying the right fucking color couch? Am I, am I, is that rug in the kitchen by the sink? Is that the right fucking color? Because if 
I meet this girl I'm trying to meet. And she comes over here and she sees this fucking rug and she says anything bad about this fucking rug. I'm burning this motherfucking rug. Okay. And the whole time I'm watching crude oil. Okay. The whole time I'm watching gold futures markets. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all those things and I'm worrying about this stupid shit. So I know if I had to come back up through this stuff, it, the climate that we have right now where things are hard, folks, these markets right now, these are the hardest market conditions I have ever, ever traded in. 30 years I've been around this show. In the last three decades, this is the hardest time to be a trader. If you are profitable and you're consistently profitable, you know what? My hats are off to you. Tap. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is... This is where you're separated. Like this is the, the division. If you can find profitability in these types of markets right now, you're a fucking amazing trader. You control yourself. You mastered yourself and all of you, regardless of whatever style you use. I mean, I don't give a fuck if it's something outside of what I do. I'm not the only one that can make money, obviously. But my opinion about how you should learn how to read the market, I'm biased in that regard. And everybody has their own opinion. Everybody that has a course, everybody has a, a service, a program, they're all going to say they're the best. Okay. I get it. But anybody that's able to find profitability right now in the last two years, and you're consistently able to do so, you should be very proud of yourself. Because I, I'm telling you, I've never seen a market environment like this where something so trivial that can come out right at any time and the market goes to shit unravels completely everything that you think you see in the marketplace and you have to be very very nimble and one of the concerns i have going forward and this is like one of the things i'm, I'm, I'm observing and studying you know proficiently or not proficiently profusely prof 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 profusely profusely i think it's the term i'm looking for profusely um Obsessively, let's just say it that way. I'm looking to see, do we deteriorate even more? And my obsessive compulsive disorder is flaring right now because this is where I would be putting putting the control M in and going back and editing out and then now saying it the way I wanted to say it. But I want to see, do we deteriorate more going forward? Does it get harder to trade? Or are we working ourselves out of those kinks? In the marketplace where it's been very very challenging very very difficult now when i say that obviously you can see that i can find setups and their precision is still there but not to the degree that it was prior to 2019 and that type of climate i want to see it come back because if i can get that in 2023 you're going to see world history.